year is July 1943, and German and Soviet forces face each other across the Bessarabian-Romanian border. Both armies are strong, with plenty of infantry divisions to form a defensive barrier, and both armies have sufficient offensive capability in the form of artillery and tanks. Things will be at a somewhat impasse here, as both armies seem to be equally matched. In the previous year, the Russians sidestepped the German forces in eastern Poland, moving towards Romania. The Germans matched that movement by reinforcing Romania but leaving Poland free. And now the Soviets have decided to sidestep the Romanian army again, moving northwards to eastern Poland and threatening some of the deeper regions in European territory. In the Spanish Civil War, the Republicans won that fight, and things are looking quite good for them over here. And now they'll continue to roll for their recruitment roles each and every turn. And I'm not too sure what occurred in the past turn, if they succeeded on the recruitment roles or not. And lastly, on the common turn front in the Far East in the Chinese territories, there has been some minor changes. The common turn of the CCP have established themselves back in Shanxi, but apart from that, they haven't gained too much ground just yet. Welcome all to Global War 1936 version 4. We are playing Operation Varsity. I am playing as the common turn peoples and having a lot of fun with it. Things are going quite grand for them. The German army has come into Ukrainian territory, into Russian territory. They've at some point acquired southern Belarusia and gone as far as eastern Ukraine before being pushed back and knocked back into well, into German territory, as, as now the Russians begin to make their advances in towards European proper territory. The Republican Civil War was a, was a tough one. It took a long time to finish that one off, as we both bided our time and preserved our strength until the opportune moment. And the CCP also, likewise, got completely taken off the board before they came and made a comeback by coming through Tsinghai as the Russians liberated that territory. So things are looking interesting on all fronts. Um, as was mentioned in, in my short little intro, the Germans had their forces present in eastern Poland, so our forces moved to Bessarabia. The Germans matched that move, and now we are moving up to eastern Poland as well, thereby threatening all these territories from that same position, and also the crucial territories of Warsaw or Romania from this eastern Poland territory. Of course, that also exposes us to attacks from both directions, as well as brings us closer in range of all the aircraft coming in from German proper territory. So it'll, be a, a, it'll have to be a balanced approach to all of this. And that is essentially it on all sides. So let's go over our purchase. Well, let's start with the CCP. They have two bucks to spend. They're not going to spend it on anything. In fact, their turn is going to be fairly mild with no attacks being made as our opponents on all fronts are still sufficiently powerful. We're going to make one somewhat of a meandering attack, which is nothing too special. But we're going to move our units... I, I'm not too sure about this at the end of the day, so we're just going to move this fellow from Tsinkang back north to Tsinghai. So no combat moves made by the uh, CCP this turn. We're also going to take advantage of the rail and rail these two units up to Chitta from Tsinghai, using the rail capacity of the CCP as a rail through these territories. It's a bit of a long route, but they can make it out here. And that is it for them. Everything stays roughly the same. So let's roll for our recruitment. One, two, three. Three dice. I was thinking about going after this place in Kuichao, but that brings us closer to some of our other opponents that are, might not be worthwhile facing off against. Alright, let's roll for a roll of three or less. We don't have... Oh, we got it! Wow, I've been extraordinarily lucky with all my recruitment rolls. It's somewhat astounding. So we're going to place uh, infantry... an infantry here in Shanxi, I think. Yes. Actually, you know what, we're going to get two militia, placing one in Sinkang, just to hold on to that territory, and another one in Shenzi. Yeah, again, to hold on to those two. Ah, actually, another one in Sing Singhao, I think. Um, uh, Singhai, just to have a base of operations on each of our territories. All right. No, never mind. Shenzi it is. Shenzi it is. I think that's more worthwhile at this point. Okay, so that takes care of uh, these guys. They collect their income, which is two bucks and we bump them up to four. Oh, sorry, make that six due to the railway. All right, now we move on to the Russians. So the Russians have a few units they're getting, um, 50 bucks, so that's this is 10 bucks for two T-34, 10 bucks for a CCP. I, th I don't have a CCP one in this color, and it doesn't seem to work to color it. No, so this is a CCP fighter. And I'm getting, what's this, uh, six infantry, seven, eight infantry. I'm getting a militia upgrade. I'm getting my free Soviet international, uh, Republican in international brigade and an anti-aircraft gun. So those are my purchases there. All right, um, that brings us down to nice, tidy zero. 
All right, moving on from that, let's take a look at the tech charts. Now the tech charts, I was I was told I forgot a, a dice roll last turn because I did two dice rolls, one for when I had only three dice, and, and then I did another three dice, but I should have been rolling four dice that time. So let me just double check my techs here. I'm advanced mechanized, jet fighters, strategic rockets, and I need one more. Am I working on anyone? I know I'm working on this one here, but I'm saving that for something special. I honestly don't know. What's worthwhile doing? We've got long range aircraft now. Hmm. Maybe I'll get back to this one because I haven't really given this one much thought. Yeah, that's too bad. I haven't given it sufficient thought. So I'm going to roll for this batch here. So a nine and a ten. So pink and pink and uh, this one and this one. That's awesome. All right. So that means that uh, we don't have too far away to go to get to those texts. And now, as for my last two texts, so I think I'm going to still have to wait on this one because nothing immediately springs to mind as to what to do. Heavy armor is good, but not super duper good. I might go for airborne doctrine because. That's a new one. It's a fun one. Maybe it'll be good to do. So I'm gonna roll twice for Airborne Doctrine, which should be this uh, this dice here. One for last turn. One for this turn. There's one roll. That's a six. So we get a discount of one here. And this one is another six, but luckily because we have a uh, we have this plus one from last turn. That means that we actually do get our first first tier up there. So that's really quite nice. One of the advantages of this tech. So there we have it, Airborne Doctrine. All right, um, moving on to the actual map. Some people might say, why Airborne Doctrine? I just want to do it for fun. <laughs> okay, our attacks. So we're sending this infantry from Central Mongolia. These two cavalry, I believe, can make the trek too, apart from the desert. I actually haven't given that a look just yet. All right, somewhere over here is some listing of this. Sorry, I thought I had this all prepared, but in the end, it turns out that I don't as much as I wanted to. Okay, then the only solution is to quickly skip back to deserts, if desert really cuts down our, our speed here. Supply path, marshes, deserts. Cut movement, all in the movement upon crossing or entering desert. So I'm not blitzing. Uh, I, I end my movement after crossing. So that's quite good. A fighter is participating in that attack, and maybe this fighter as well. One, two, three. So a little bit overpowered, but we're going into that with a sufficient amount of force. So, Suyan, one infantry. Uh, yeah, I'm going to just roll for my two, uh, two aircraft, really, at six, and see what the results are. The opponent gets to roll one at four. Two hits, and he has one hit. So we're going to take away our... Sorry, I don't know if I lingered long enough on that. Magnifying glass, four, five, and here we have a two. So we take one hit away, which will take away our infantry coming into that territory. And our aircraft will land. And we're going to land these puppies over here in Singhai, I think. The cavalry get bounced back to here as we hand over that territory to the... You know what? I shouldn't have been rolling for all the other stuff. Um, I should be setting up some of my other attacks, but I thought I'd do this on this side first. Because honestly, I wanted to uh, do all my Far East side before that side. But let's pause everything at this point, and we'll move back to the other side. All right. Yeah, we're going to do another attack over here, which is simply a walk on into Amor. So that is it. And that completes this side of things. So I'm going to quickly adjust the map, and then we'll move on from this point. So here we have Japanese down by one, Soviets up by one and technically the CCP up by one, and another down for the Japanese. And that should basically do all of our our adjustments in relation to the Japanese. We still have non-combat move to do on this side, but uh, we'll move on from there. All right, uh, let's take a look at our combat moves here. We're having a sea attack there, and a sea attack here. This is going to be a seaplane and our uh, submarine. These ships are going to be important. We're going to make a move against the fins over here. And so we're sending in our well all the units here that can reach. So all these guys here coming to Lapland with the hopes of blitzing past that point and going into southern Finland. These two infantry are marching to Vaipuri. We're also sending in the three fighters over here to Vaipuri as well. So that means one, one, two, three, 
four, five, six. They get three more movements. Yeah, that will be it. Um, no. One, two, three. Yeah, what else are we doing? We have an airborne sitting here. So they. All right, sorry about that. My son just woke up and they haven't seen me in a few days. So they'll probably be quite excited <laughs> to hang out with me. All right, um, we have the seaplane coming out here as well. And the air transport. Now, where is that going to go? Now, that one is going to come and drop off a trans uh, air, air unit here in one, two, three. Four. I'm oh, sorry. One. Hmm, one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. So no, we're just gonna fly straight from here and drop him off in West Poland. Boom. That's our plans right there. Actually, can we read somewhere else? One. Two. Three. Four. Five, six. Oh yeah, okay, that's what we wanted to do. We're actually going to go as far as Bohemia. So that really takes us off the beaten path. We're going to attempt for Bohemia. Now, I need to double check that. Because we came from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Because we're leaving from an air, air base. And we are also... Um, we're leaving from an air base and we also have long-range aircraft. So that takes us as far as Bohemia. And as I recall, there's no response that our opponent can have apart from aircraft and any potential long distance trekkers, which I don't think there's anything available at this point. So Bohemia is in our hands so far. All right, what other attacks are we going to make? Well, they're going to be fairly simple attacks. We're going to send this army here, the 74th West East Poland. So I will list over what that is on a private channel later on. But the 74th army is moving here as well as this multitude of, of motorized and, and other units are coming up to this position as well. Let me just clear clear these all. Yeah, there we go. We are going to add to that these units right here. Hi, my boy. Hey, Dad. Remember we made pancakes? You made pancakes? You're, awesome. Are you hungry? I am a little bit hungry. Let me finish the video and then we'll have pancakes, yeah? Or I'll have pancakes with you. Okay, so that army moves in there, and this army from Western Ukraine moves south to Bessarabia. And so that's five units there, but that's a non-combat. Sorry, I'm a little bit scatterbrained. Let's see, what other attacks are we making? So East Poland, we're going to delete that, and we're going to duplicate this one. Now we need to do those attacks, and... Okay, that is it for all of our attacks, I believe. Okay, all right, so let's start off with our anti-submarine, or our anti convoy rating. Let me just double check, I feel like I've missed something here there. An attack there, an attack there. That should about do it. Okay, let's roll for our submarine rating. Starting off with the, um, is the attacker, defender. Okay, so the attacker, for the sub and the defender for the uh, convoy line. So we get a plus two on our dice, which gives us one hit. Um, and here's a seaplane. So the seaplane gets no positive or negative modifiers. And it looks like our dice got stuck. I don't think we'll get this one. Oh yeah, so we did only one hit. Now the other submarine uh, off of Norway there as it comes in. Off uh, the Skagrak, the Danish Skagrak. And again, we missed on that one. So very, very poor successes this turn. Okay, those get deleted. And only one hit so far. Okay, let me pause. Alright, I'm back. I moved myself to a little quieter quarters as I quickly finish my turn. Okay, so that is it. Let's go on to the attack over here into Lapland. I have uh, a bunch of units. He has one unit defending at four. Let's see what those results are. One at four. And I have two tanks, which I believe are rolling at sixes, if memory serves. And let's just see what those results are. Oopsie daisy. So green is for the defense, red is for the attacker. 
he hits and we hit him twice as well so we take out this this dude here these both these dudes I suppose two gone and we've captured that territory for the uh, Soviet cause and now we are continuing onwards just with our mechanized and our two T-34s into southern Finland so again that's against an infantry we're not crossing any marshes into these territories and likewise into Lapland we weren't crossing any marches e marshes either so again we're just gonna roll for the infantry and the t two T-34s if needed we'll roll for a little bit more in a moment a 5 is a hit and 11 is a miss now just in case I've got my numbers wrong I'm gonna roll for the two mechanized which I believe because they're just simple mechanized they're not advanced mechanized that they hit at a 3 which is one hit right here so there we have it we managed to capture that one with no casualties and the Finnish infantry comes off the table leaving us in a position where we could subsequently attack the um, attack Helsinki if need be alright um, let's go for Vipuria province now let me double check on marshes I believe it's a negative modifier for us all vehicle class have negative two attack and defense so we don't have any vehicle class that means there's two infantry going in at a two let's just delete those and I do believe that he has is it four infantry or is it simply three three infantry three infantry defending so that is let's say three of these dice now we have three sixes and we have two at two Okay, two hits, and those guys miss. And on their end of things, they have two hits as well. So that's really a troublesome situation, but nonetheless, we'll have to take it. Um, two hits against them, and we are not taking off our... We're not taking off our aircraft, so that means Vipuri province stays in their hands. And we're going to retreat our aircraft out of that territory and back to where they came from. So one, two, three, four, five, six. They land back in Smolensk, I believe. Yeah, that seems to be the best place for them. So we made our two attacks here. Our transport landed where it ought to be. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we're gonna land our transport over here. I think that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that's where we'll go. All right. Um, now we move on to the non-combat phase. Let's start with the Far East again. We're going to move these three infantry to Tsinghai. The two fighters landed here already. These two got bounced back here. We are going to move these three infantry from Amur down south. Um, we're going to move these three infantry to this position here. Yeah. Let's say to here, to Kobdo. I think that would be a good one. Kobdo. Um, and that takes care of business on this side. Now, over here, non-combat move, we are going to rail the Soviet cavalry, as well as this international brigade, and they're going to swing all the way to Tsinghai. Yep, to Tsinghai, I think. Yep. Alright. Um, now, non combat for the rest of it. So, right now, Bessarabia is empty, so we're moving five infantry from western Ukraine south. We are moving, sorry, this airborne unit is staying here in western Ukraine. Um, these two tanks are coming, moving two spaces to this position as well. Arg. They're moving two spaces. Oh man, nothing seems to want to go. This infantry is going to march one space to eastern Ukraine. Actually, it's going to march to southern Belarusia. And these, this militia is going to march up here to Karelia. 
And I believe that's it for our non-combat moves. Now just for the record, my fleet is in port here. And that means this Finnish coastal ship is... Well, it's neutral, I guess. It's Finn. Uh, these guys are Finn. It's not British or German, but they're all still Finn. And this coastal defense ship is also Finnish at this point. Is finished. And that about does it. Okay, so let's adjust our income tracker. Hold on. So we, uh, the Germans go down by one because they lost Eastern Poland. The Russians go up by one for Eastern Poland and then two for the for the territory there in Finland. So we're at 49 and the Germans are at 45. So we've exceeded them at this point. That's pretty cool. Um, all right. And now we go on to place unit phase. I have this strange feeling I'm missing something, but nonetheless, let's just move on. So the CCP fighter arrives here in Singhai as it is the the, neck, the end of our railway junction. Oh, one move I will make is the Soviet fighter will go up here in central Mongolia. Because that's one of the things I want to protect is this railway. If I have a fighter here and a fighter here, does that protect it or do I just need one in each territory? Five, six, seven, eight, yeah. That's one of the tricky little things. Okay. That, uh, that's that. Now we're going to place all these units in this factory off the coast of Turkey or off the off of Turkey so that is because we have improved factories we have six infantry here and two tanks placed right here ready to march into Turkish territory now of course we're a little bit overpowered with the tanks not being able to blitz but nonetheless that's the goal we want to do yeah um, we have an anti-aircraft gun and the International Brigade gets placed up here. And we're going to place our two infantry over here at this factory. Plus, we're going to do a militia upgrade. We're going to upgrade the one here in central Mongolia. Uh, I have a couple more. Mm, nah, I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, yeah, a couple more non-combat move. Soviet militia comes up from Leningrad to this position. And <coughs> this pre-existing Soviet militia. You know what? He stays there. He stays there. I think it's worthwhile doing. Oh yeah, this Lithuanian airborne comes across to Podlachia. No, you know what? He's going to stay here. He's going to stay here just to cause a hindrance because it's worth an IPP. And that about concludes all of our movements altogether across the board. All of our place unit stuff. Things are looking pretty good on all sides. So let's go to collect income. First of all, how much money do we have here? We have... 49, and we add to that a little bit of cheddar for these guys. So, 49, that's 52 for holding three of those cities. That's it, 52 bucks to spend on the subsequent turn. So that's quite lovely. Excellent. Okay, thank you all for watching, and check out uh, the veterans' turn next to watch the Japanese turn. Cheers.